I don't know if you can hear it out there, but it is raining up a storm. Like it is just coming down. So that's that's pretty crazy. We've gotten more rain this year than I can remember getting in a long, long time. Apparently our reservoirs are really high too. And they're evacuating a lot of people at lower land levels at this point. So hopefully everyone's staying safe out there. With that, let's get into what we're here for. And that is to talk about the Isshin Racer 250. You know, I've owned three of these. And the first two I got at auction. And the third one I actually bought brand new just to do this review. And kind of had some hiccups along the way. Um, let me go grab the power distribution board it came with. If you'll notice, I have a couple of these, right? And um, yeah, I've gone through with some Racer 250s, let me tell you. So what's funny is that this one came with this board, which looks pretty new and shiny, right? Even has this QC pass sticker on it, but actually had an incorrect capacitor at the top of it. And that capacitor caused the uh, five volt BEC to just short out. So um, that was actually the delay in this review is I had to contact Banggood and get another PDB shipped out. And then by the time that all happened, I put it back together, it's just been months. So go figure. Also, I haven't made videos in like a week now because of my recent engagement. So it's been, it's been fun. It's been a busy time in life. So it's about time to get back to it. Anyways, now that I'm way off track, let me let me bounce back to the topic. I can't really give an initial like feeling review of the Racer 250 because I've gone a long way with these. And I, I mentioned it in my unboxing that I did back in October as well. So what I want to do today is I want to look over the Racer 250. I want to go over some of the weak points um, and, the, and give some new tips as well. The reason being is that, you know, in a world of quadcopters like the Isshin Racer 250, not all of us can have computers that have Intel Core i7s with NVIDIA GTX 1080s and, you know, a $1,500 racing quad or freestyle quad with a Phantom 4 Professional on the side to do aerial videography. Um... There's, there's these words that exist like money, job, family, responsibilities, bills. And so, you know, some of us have to be pretty damn wise when it comes to our spending choices. So our love for the hobby can sometimes be outweighed by the, the weight of our wallet. And uh, we have to pick and choose what it is that we can do so and they still sell these it's been quite a while and they are still here and still being sold and so you know the goal of my channel is to is to help people you know make better purchasing decisions as well as take care of their stuff if you know they do purchase something like this so Isshin Racer 250 let me just say that I remember getting this thing and looking at it with just pure awe, like it was the most beautiful woman in the world. Like she was so pretty. I don't have rose colored glasses. She's just, she was my princess peach in the world full of princess daisies. Don't ask me how that fits in. I'm just working on analogies right now. So yeah, I remember looking at this thing with, you know, a lot of awe. Not even really remembering how the propellers went on there and just be like, oh man, this is the Racer 250. It's so, it's so heavy, right? And that's not really a good thing in quads. It's like, there's so much weight to this. There's going to be so much perpetual motion. You hit something, you're going to destroy something. There's no blade guards. You're going to chop your fingers off, right? Oh my gosh, I can put an action cam on the front and record flight footage. Yeah, there is there is a lot of dreams that went into this thing. And, you know, starting to learn how to fly, because this is what I truly learned how to, to fly on. The, the toy quads were really just toys that, that I figured out. Um, man, just learned a lot. So I can't, 
I can't give an initial review. I kind of remember how I felt about this quad when I first opened it up. And I was reading it online. I'm like, oh, this is so amazing. <laughs> but, you know, nostalgia has passed at this point. And now, you know, it's not that I won't fly the Racer 250. I'm actually going to have to fly it if I'm ever going to finish this series of videos. But now I could give you a, a more realistic idea of what to look out for and you know a possible good upgrade path as well so let's just jump right into this because i've rambled for enough so this is the racer 250 Looking for a pointing option. At the top here, we have our VTX. I believe it is something in the 200 milliwatt range. It has a built-in OSD that will show you your channel number as well as your current voltage because this VTX is actually connected directly to the LiPo pa uh, power. It does not go through a 12 volt BEC. We'll explain that another time. At the top here, we have an anti-vibration camera mount. In the front, we have our FPV cam along with two LEDs that are always, uh, no, they're not always on. They can be switched off with either this switch or a switch on the receiver if set up, or transmitter if it's set up properly. Moving on, flight controller commonly comes with a CC3D. There's also options for a NAS32 and then a custom SPF3 clone uh, flight controller as well. This bottom board is your power distribution board um, as well as your bottom plate. So, inherent weakness in that being that it's not carbon fiber. However, it does do your power distribution. So your LiPo plugs in here. It provides the five volts for your flight controller, your receiver, as well as your LEDs and your LED in the back with the controller for the LED being on the board underneath the flight controller as well. Motors, we have 2204, I wanna say these are 2300 KV, but I'm not perfectly sure. What they are, they are Emacs clones, and they were actually two different versions of the motors that I know of, but they are both similar. I actually have one of the older ones on here because I already destroyed one of these motors. ESCs, 12 amp ESCs running Simone K firmware, or Simonk firmware, I don't know how you pronounce that, communicating with the flight controller by the PWM, um, what's that, protocol. So we'll talk about that at another time as well. Now, if you get this in the ready to fly kit or the almost ready to fly kit and it comes with a receiver, you will get a FlySky IA6 receiver that is only capable of the PWM protocol between that and the flight controller as well. So that's your basic parts there. Top plate is carbon fiber, uh, arms are plastic, front plate is metal. You get like a 10, maybe 15 degree camera tilt. It's not much at all. And yeah, that is it. So on the bench, as it is, I believe this is well over 300 grams without the battery. 397, it's almost 400 grams. It's quite a bit heavier than what I would like to fly. But that being said, it is what it is. Now, the first thing I wanna do is I wanna go over the weak points in this because those are the things that you need to keep in mind the most. Now, your big weak point is A, going to be the ESCs. These are 12 amp ESCs, and so you need to be very careful in how you're flying it. If you're just learning how to fly, it's probably not gonna be a big issue. But as you get into horizon mode a little bit more and you're doing flips, and then into full acro and you're doing good punch outs and stuff, it's going to become more and more of an issue. ESCs need to be early in your upgrade path. The second weak point about these things is how they are mounted. Now, I've seen them mounted two ways. I've seen them mounted like this, kind of how I have them here. And then I've also seen them kind of thrown in the arm sideways with just loose zip ties on them. Both are pretty bad. The reason is, is because the way that these wires are just chilling here, they are going to vibrate constantly in flight. And what I could tell you is that eight times out of 10, whenever this thing refuses to fly after a light crash, it's because wires have broken off the solder points from the ESCs. 
and it's generally going to be the motor wires because it's a thinner gauge than the power wire from the ESC to the PDB. Check out for that. If you crash your quad or if your quad just stops flying, check those connections. It's like I said, 8 out of 10. That's it. Unless you have a burn ESC or something else. Um, your next weak point is actually going to be structurally. This bottom PDB is not as strong as a carbon fiber plate would be. These plastic arms are not as strong as carbon fiber arms would be. So this frame, even though these are heavier than what carbon fiber would be as well, don't have as much strength and need to be taken care of, you know, kind of gingerly. So it's just something to keep in mind. How Now, the receiver as well. Receiver and ESCs. There's different communication protocols. PWM, PPM, IBUS on the receiver transmitter side. Between the flight controller and the ESC, you have PWM, you have one shot 125, one shot 42, multi-shot, D-shot, so on and so forth. PWM, oldest standard of them all, has the most latency. So on the receiver transmitter side, if you could upgrade to something that's, well, okay, PPM, PWM, almost the same latency, just a simpler setup. However, going from PPM or PWM into IBUS is going to lower your input latency from about 40 milliseconds all the way down to 10. So your quad will gain quite a bit of response. And then between the flight controller and the ESCs, PWM, again, the most latency. However, if you kick all over to one shot 125, that's going to be a huge jump. And so it's something to think about. These can actually be flashed to BL Heli uh, firmware and run one shot 125. That will be a future video as well. So, you know, that's something to think about. Those are two weak points in there besides the fact that it's just 12 amp ESCs, which you can overload that pretty easy. So let's go over some noob tips. Okay, noob tip time. Number one, let's go over camera vibration plate, okay? This thing, you will lose it the way that it is now. Even with nothing on it, this thing has a tendency to fly off and just be gone. Something that's really easy to do, that'll help you to keep from doing that, is to take some zip ties and to stick it through the middle hole of the vibration ball and then around the frame, make sure to not get any wires tucked in between there. Just pull her through, boom, go ahead and close her up. And what you want to do is you want to not really, really tighten it. You want the ball to still have some movement to it. That way it does its job, but you want the mount to be secure as well. So done. Now, last time I did this, I only did it on the back two. And then guess what happened? The front two balls went missing. And so this is actually a replacement plate. This time I'm gonna do it to all four, like I should have done the first time. Ta-da! All right, tip number two, props. These come with some pretty weak props. These are uh, dual blade, I think like 5040s or something. Um, so, A, props are like the toilet paper of the hobby. You're gonna to need to get a lot more props. But what props you get are dependent on your um, ESC and motor combination. Now your motor and your prop are actually gonna generate a certain amount of thrust and draw a certain amount of amps. That's not always determined so much by the ESC. So what you use is you use what's called a motor thrust chart and you determine what props on what motors are gonna generate what thrust at what amps. And then you use that and compare it to your ESCs to see what you can safely run and what's gonna be too much. You know that on this, with these ESCs, you can't go over 12 amps. So without looking at the chart, I'm gonna give some basic suggestions, but I'm also going to link the chart in the description, that way you can look these up yourself. Stock props, 5040 dual blades, perfectly fine. 5040 tri blades, should be okay. Uh, 5040 or 5045 bullnose props, should be okay. The ones I would stay away from, are 5040 or 5045 tri-blade bullnose. These are going to draw too much power. And just to use an analogy, basically, some people are gonna tell you, oh, I've flown those things all the time and I got away with it and it worked probably fine. That's okay. Everyone gets their opinion. But just for analogy, say you take a paper clip and you bend it, right? And you bend it back. Well. It's still working. Say you bend it again. 
and then you bend it back. Might still work, but how many times are you gonna be able to bend it before it breaks? That's what you're doing with those ESCs. Every time you hit that 12 amp limit and you're going above that, you're stressing them beyond what they're capable of. And you might get away with it once, you might get away with it twice, you might get away with it 50 times, but you're asking for failure. And you really don't want to be in the air when this thing fails like that. So, you know, just safe recommendation, stay within what you're rated for, and you're going to be happier in the long one and not have as much downtime. All right, so on the flight modes, ESC, 250 has typically three flight modes and I'm going to say typically because one of the weak points of this is the stock images from the manufacturer are pretty much crap. I had this bright idea that I was going to get the NAS32, the CC3D, the SPF3, try to review them all, get the stock PIDs, try to tune them all, and in the end I figured out it was a mess. So, you know, I'm not going to go there. I'm going to stop talking about that. Okay. Stock tuning. Watch out for it. Basically, you are going to have three flight modes. Typically, you're going to have angle mode, which is where, you know, you control it, but you can't do a flip and it's generally pretty soft on the sticks. You have horizon mode, which is the same as angle, has that self leveling to where when you let off the stick, the quad kind of gets its back, gets itself back to the perpendicular, perpendicular, level position however when you go max on the stick the quad will actually do a flip in that direction now this can be very dangerous because typically the tunings on their on the racer 250 have very low rates the rate is the rate at which your quad will turn at full stick typically measured in degrees or uh what is it called i don't know degrees or a multiplier so, you know, depending on your GCS, it could be degrees to where at full stick, this thing's gonna rotate 400 degrees a second, which means every second it's doing like a flip in another 40 degrees. Rates are important because when you finally get the cojones to do that first flip, you don't wanna have really low rates, hit that full stick, see your quad go upside down, then let off freaking out, and it just drive itself into the ground. That happened to me. I did that. It's not good. You don't want to do it. So um, learn about rates and push your rates up a bit before trying to start getting really into Horizon. It's, it's just a good idea. Trust me. And then finally, you have your full acro. By the time you start hitting full acro, you know, you should have an idea of what you're doing. So... New tip, number one was vibration dampener. Number two, um, secure these ESC wires better. Do something, electrical tape, foam. Uh, you could kind of nudge them over the arm a little bit and then tape that arm and that'll actually help with vibration a little bit. The thicker wires, you don't have to worry about as much. I never had that much trouble with those, but these motor wires, these things are horrible. Get them secure, it will help your life. Number three, battery placement. Let me reset the camera. However, there is some inherent flaws in that. Number one, either you have capacitors on the PDB. These capacitors actually don't translate into flight so much as they do the VTX. They act as power filters to keep interference from the ESCs and the motors from going back into the VTX and keeping your FPV footage clear. If you're only flying line of sight, and those get knocked off, it's not a big deal. If you're flying FPV, however, and those get knocked off, they're going to degrade your FPV footage. And however, you may end up having to replace them at some point. They're surface mount components. I'll show you how to do that at some point. However, you can always work ahead and do what I'd have done, which is I used um, all-purpose cement, but basically some kind of glue that will help hold it to the PDB because the way these things are held are only by the two surface mount legs that I'll take a picture of. And so they're not on there very well. But back to battery placement. The other thing you might do is you might knock the crap out of your USB plug and just knock it right off the board, just shear it right off the board. And then either you're replacing your flight controller or you're just not connecting it to the GCS software, something like that. 
So one of the first mods that is always recommended is to take your VTX off the top, move it to the back, center the receiver if you want to, and run with your batteries on the top. This will also let you run different size batteries because like with these, these are my go-to 3S batteries. They got a little bit more of a problem sitting in there. And so having them on here and having them strapped down nicely is good. Another tip, straps. Use rubberized straps. It's very important. Don't just go to your local Harbor Freight or whatever and get Velcro straps. You want straps that have that rubber coating at the bottom because it's gonna hold your cameras better, it's gonna hold your batteries better, it's, it's important. When you're assembling your quad, thread locker is your friend. Screws coming out of your quad mid-flight because the vibration is not your friend. Helpful tip for the wise. Then we have oiling motors. It's kind of important, some people do it, some people just run them till they die. I like to oil them, if I'm flying every day, I like to oil them once a week. However, oil your motors with machine oil or a different oil meant for that purpose. Do not use WD-40 PB blaster, some sort of penetrant oil like that because it's not made for this type of application. It'll actually be counterproductive productive and turn to sludge. So all purpose machine oil is really good. Sewing machine oil, stuff like that. Use it, have a happy time. Um, what else? Oh, battery charger. That came with this thing. It's bad. Throw it away. Get a better battery charger. If you bought one of these brand new, um, upgrade path, I would say is... <sighs> okay, ESCs and battery charger are both really high up there. From there, mm, motors... Motors, flight controller, and frame are all kind of even from there on. Because once you get those first two taken care of, you know, you got those last three. Another thing, when you're getting into those advanced flight modes, you're flying line of sight and you're thinking about switching to Horizon or switching to Acro, get into a flight simulator. It's much better to crash in a simulator than it is to crash in real, li in real life. And it's not that the models and the physics are perfect. It's just that it will get you used to flying like that. And it'll help you figure out how you need to save yourself or control your quad. Because the more you crash in there, hopefully the less you would crash, you know, with the actual quad. So use a simulator. You know, if you have a computer, some transmitters are a little bit easier to hook up into the computer to practice with than others. But if anything, Get like a PlayStation 4 controller that has the two thumbsticks and actually works really well in my case. I mean, even mobile phones have a whole crap load of apps. I looked it up the other day and I was surprised. I was just like, geez, people are trying to make money off this like none other. So yeah, get into a simulator. Don't just fly the simulator. Use it to um, use the flight simulator training to complement your real world training. That way, hopefully, it helps you um, gain more skill at a better level. One thing that really happens in quads is that our passion for the hobby um, and our purchasing decisions often outweigh our skill level. You know, we get something like this and we get hungry for more power or faster flips or better something or something or something when really... There's a lot more that we can learn from what we have. Uh, it tell, I'm telling you from this from experience. It was my personal experience. I spent more money on better things that I just tore up because I really wasn't ready for them. And when I should have just sat on my hands a little bit and went out and flew more often. So, you know, that's my experienced initial review of the Racer 250 along with a whole crap load of new tips. Um, coming up, the very next video, and the video that I actually intended to shoot when I started shooting this thing is moving the VTX from the back, from the front top plate to the back. That way you can put your batteries on top. So stay tuned. Should be out just a couple days after this one. This is almost the end of February. So, you know, make sure you get into our February giveaway if you haven't already. If it's not February, I host a giveaway every month. So check. Um, 
check the Facebook or anything else in the description to, to check out what giveaway we currently have. With that, if you have any questions about the Racer 250, there are a couple Facebook groups I actually highly recommend. One being the Isheen group. You know, a lot of those pilots had Racer 250s or Falcon 180s and moved on. Uh, the Wizard 220X is actually the, the hot ticket right now from Isheen. So you'll find a lot of people flying those, but it's a good place to go to if you have questions about this quad. As well as another group that I'll recommend it isn't Isheen specific, but has a lot of hopeful members, and that's the Skulls and Drones Racing Group. You know, it's a closed group and it's called a racing group, but it is pretty open. Um, so go ahead and find it. I'll put a description or I'll put a link in the description below. Ask to join. And if you have any questions, just let us know anytime. With that, my name is Lazy PC. Have fun.